students welcome to sunil's tutorial i'm sunil mirwani and today we'll be doing this chapter called as inverse circular function let's see this guys find inverse circular function sin inverse of root 3 by 2 right <coughs> now guys all you have to do is when you're doing inverse circular function you have to remember the format that if sin a is equal to b then a is equal to sin inverse of b that means if i take sin from one side to the other side it becomes inverse right so let's see how do we solve this up we will say let sin inverse of root 3 by 2 equal to x therefore if i use that formula i get root 3 by 2 is equal to sin x but we know that sin 60 is root 3 by 2 therefore i can say x is equal to 60 degree 60 is nothing but 180 divided by 3 180 is nothing but pi upon 3 180 is written as pi in radians therefore i can say that sin inverse of root 3 by 2 is nothing but pi radians divided by 3 next let's see another sum guys cos inverse of negative root 3 by 2 Same way like we did the previous sum, guys. We will say that cos inverse of negative root three by two equal to x. Therefore, negative root three by two is cos x. Now we know that, but cos thirty is root three by two. But here we have the answer is negative. Now, if you remember your coordinate system, all silver T cups, allied angles, right? Cos ratio is negative in the second quadrant and third quadrant. I want a negative answer. Cos ratio is negative in the second and the third quadrant. Second quadrant, this is zero, ninety, one eighty, two seventy, three sixty. Reading anti-clockwise. Cos ratio is negative in the second and the third quadrant. If I want a negative answer, that means either it should be in the second quadrant or third quadrant. So I can therefore say that x second quadrant starts from 90 degree. Second quadrant starts from 90 degree, or third quadrant starts from 180 degree. We said that cos 30 is root 3 by 2, so this is 90 plus 30 or 180 plus 30, so 120 degree. Or two ten degrees, right? Do we understand this? See, if you get a negative answer, you have to first find out the quadrants in which the given value will be negative. If it is negative in the second and the third quadrant, write the starting point of those quadrants plus the angle, right? So in that case, therefore, I can say that cos inverse, cos inverse. Of negative root three by two is one twenty degree or two ten degrees. Next, let's see another sum, guys. Tan inverse of negative one. So we say let tan inverse of negative one be x. Therefore, x is equal to sorry one negative one is equal to tan x. Right. Again, I have a negative value. Negative value means I need to use allied angles. All silver T cups, right? Now, tan ratio is negative in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. Second quadrant starts from 90 degree. Fourth quadrant starts from 270 degree, right? Now we know that tan 45 is one. So you will say 90 plus 45 or 270 plus 45. So this is going to be nothing but 135 degrees, or this is going to be 315 degrees. Therefore, I can say that tan inverse of negative one is 135 degrees or 350 degrees. That's how you find these values. Next, now let's see if we have multiple functions. How do we solve them? Please 
transversal code functions. Fourth, find the value of cos inverse of cos 13 pi by 6. Right? Same method, let cos inverse of cos 13 pi by 6 be equal to x. So if I take cos inverse on the other side, it will become cos, so you will get cos 13 pi by 6 is equal to cos x. Use allied angles. Now if I use allied angle, cos 13 pi by 6, I need to reduce this. Before I cancel the cos function, you have to reduce the given angle into simplest form. What do I mean by reducing the angle to the simplest form? I need to reduce the angle to a value less than 360 degree. Now, cos 13 pi by 6 can be written as cos 2 pi plus pi by 6. Cos 13 pi by 6. See guys, 6 to the 12 plus 1, 13. So 13 pi by 6 can be written as 2 pi plus pi by 6. Question. So how do we know that, how we will reduce it? For reducing a given angle, there are only four methods you can use. Those are either you have to add subtract with pi by 2, pi, 3 pi by 2 or 2 pi. Whatever is the given angle, add subtract something to this to get the given angle. Like in this case, I used 2 pi, 2 pi plus theta. Right? Now cos 2 pi plus theta, we need to use allied angles. 2 pi plus theta first quadrant. In first quadrant, all trigger ratios are positive, right? For pi and 2 pi, the trigger ratio does not change. Guys, we've done this in allied angles. So this will be cos pi by 6 is equal to cos x. Therefore, cos cos gets cancelled. x is equal to pi by 6. Fine. Let's see another sum of this kind, people. Tan inverse of tan. 9 pi by 8. Same method. Let tan inverse of tan 9 pi by 8 equal to x. Therefore, I can say that tan 9 pi by 8 is equal to tan x. Reduce the given angle into its simplest form. 9 pi by 8 can be written as tan pi plus pi by 8 8 pi plus pi will give you 9 pi is tan x tan pi plus pi by 8 allied angles pi plus pi by 8 third quadrant third quadrant tan ratio is positive for pi and 2 pi the trigger ratio does not change so this will be tan pi by 8 is equal to tan x therefore x is equal to pi by 8 right you need to remember your basics clearly when you are doing all this. Next, tan inverse of pi by 12 is equal to sine inverse of x. Right? You have to find x. Now, let us assume here you have multiple inverse functions. Let us assume that tan inverse of pi by 12 is equal to theta. Let us assume that tan inverse of pi by 12 is theta. In which case I can therefore say that pi by 12 will be equal to tan theta. Right? If I take the tan function on the other side. Now guys let's draw a right angle triangle. Let's draw a triangle ABC in which angle B is 90 degree and angle C is theta. So if I am saying that tan theta is 5 by 12, tan is opposite upon adjacent. So this is 5, this is 12. If I apply Pythagoras theorem to this, my hypotenuse will be 30. In which case I can therefore say sin theta will be opposite upon hypo question. So why are you finding sin theta? Because look at my answer. I need sin in the answer. That's the reason why I'm finding out sin theta. So sin theta is going to be 5 by 13. Take function on the other side. So theta will be equal to sin.
sin inverse of 5 by 13. But what is the value of theta? The value of theta is tan inverse of 5 by 12. So I can therefore say that tan inverse of 5 by 12 is sin inverse of 5 by 13. But they have given me that tan inverse of 5 by 12 is sin inverse of x. Therefore comparing the two equations, I can say that x is equal to 5 by 13. Right? Do we understand how do we do multiple inverse functions? Let's see another sum guys. Prove that sine inverse of 3 by 5 minus sine inverse of 8 by 17 is cos inverse of 84 by 85 right let's see how do we do this let us assume that sine inverse of 3 by 5 is x let us assume that sine inverse of 3 by 5 is x in which case therefore I can say that 3 by 5 is equal to sin x if I take the sine function on the other side I will get 3 by 5 is equal to sin x draw a right angle triangle in which one angle is 30, 90 so this is say if I draw this triangle ABC one angle is 90 and this angle is say x sin x is opposite upon hypo if I apply Pythagoras theorem to this my adjacent side will be 4 right Similarly, I will say let sin inverse of 8 by 17 be equal to y. So in which case I can therefore say that 8 by 17 is sin y. Draw another right angle triangle guys. Let's draw triangle PQR in which Q is 90 degree and R is y. If I am saying sine, sine means opposite upon hypo. If I apply Pythagoras theorem to this, QR will be 50. Right? Now, I have to find out, look at my right hand side. I want cos inverse. People, imagine, if I take this cos inverse on the other side, it will become cos. This value of taken as x, this value of taken as y. So you will say that consider cos of x minus y. Sir, how did you realize that you have to do this? Look at what you have to prove and from there you have to find out what you have to do. Whatever is the function on the right hand side, take it on the left hand side. The two terms that you have on the left hand side, you already assumed variables for them. Now cos x minus 5, apply addition formula. Addition formula or compound angle formulas. Cos x minus y will be cos x, cos y, plus sin x sin y right cos a minus b cos a cos b plus sin a sin b cos x guys look at the right angle triangle cos x is going to be nothing but 4 by 5 cos y is going to be nothing but 15 by 17 plus sin x sin x we already know is 3 by 5 sin y is 8 by 17 this is 60 by 85 plus 24 by 85. This is nothing but 84 by 85. So we have found out that cos of x minus y is 84 by 85. We just found this out people. If I take the cos function on the other side, then I can therefore say that x minus y is cos inverse of 84 by 85 cos function on the other side right resubstitute the value of x and y x is nothing but sin inverse of 3 by 5 minus y is nothing but sin inverse of 8 by 17 is cos inverse of 84 by 85
right? I'll show you another sum of this kind. Suppose that I need to prove prove that tan inverse of 1 by 7 plus cos inverse of 4 by 5 is pi by 4. Right? Guys, look at the previous sum and try solving it on your own. Same method has to be used. How do I do this guys? Let tan inverse of 1 by 7 be equal to x. Therefore, I can say that 1 by 7 will be equal to tan x. Right? Draw a right angle triangle. 90 degree. Let angle C be equal to x. Tan is opposite upon adjacent. 49 plus 150 is 5 root 2 right so my hypo is going to be nothing but 5 root 2 right next let's see this let cos inverse of 4 by 5 be equal to y therefore I can say that 4 by 5 is cos y draw your right angle triangle I'm drawing it here only guys let's assume this is triangle PQR and let's assume that angle y is equal to uh, angle r is equal to y now cos is adjacent upon hypo if I apply Pythagoras theorem sin PQ will be equal to 3 now, let's see the answer people. I want tan inverse of 1 by 7 plus cos inverse of 4 by 5 should be equal to pi by 4. That means pi by 4 is nothing but 45. And we know that tan 45 is 1. So what we are going to do is, we are going to find out tan of x plus y. Whenever there is pi by 4, when there is only an angle given, people, it's always the tan function. On the right hand side, if there is no trigger ratio given to you, if there is no function given to you, that means the trigger ratio that has to be taken is tan because it's only in the tan ratio that you get an answer 1 and that's the reason why the trigger ratio is not written. Okay. So in simple language, all you need to remember is that on my right hand side, if I have only an angle, then you have to take the trigger ratio as tan right let's apply addition formula to this tan a plus b is nothing but tan a plus tan b upon 1 minus tan a tan b right now this can be written as tan x let's look at the figure we can find out the value of tan x tan x is nothing but 1 by 7 plus tan y tan y is going to be 3 by 4 upon 1 minus tan x tan x is 1 by 7 tan y is 3 by 4 this is nothing but 4 plus 21 upon 28 LCM people upon 28 minus 3 upon 28 right so in that case this is going to be nothing but 28, 28 gets cancelled this is 25 upon 25 which is 1 right so we just found out that tan x plus y is nothing but 1 1 can be written as tan 45 we know that the value of tan 45 is 1 therefore I could say that tan x plus y is tan 45 tan and tan gets cancelled we substitute the value people tan uh, sorry x x we've written uh, assumed as tan inverse of 1 by 7 plus y y we've assumed as cos inverse of 4 by 5 45 can be written as 180 divided by 4 180 is nothing but pi radians so this is pi by 4 and this is what we have to prove right next let's see another some people 
prove that twice tan inverse of 1 by 8 plus tan inverse of 1 by 7 plus twice tan inverse of 1 by 5 is equal to pi by 4. Right? Now, since all my trigger ratios are same and I have twice tan inverse, I cannot draw the angle here. You know, I cannot take the assumption that twice tan inverse of 1 by 8. So in which case, I need to do this by a different method. I need to do this by using inverse formula. Now, I'll first give you the formula, guys. Write this formula down. Tan inverse of A plus tan inverse of B is given by the formula tan inverse of A plus B upon 1 minus AB. Okay, so we are going to use this inverse formula. Let's start with the left hand side people. LHS is twice tan inverse of 1 by 8 plus tan inverse of 1 by 7 plus twice tan inverse of 1 by 5. Twice tan inverse of 1 by 8 can be written as tan inverse of 1 by 8 plus tan inverse of 1 by 8. 2x can be written as x and x, x plus x. Similarly, this could be written as tan inverse of 1 by 8 plus tan inverse of 1 by 8 plus tan inverse of 1 by 7 plus twice tan inverse of 1 by 5 can be written as tan inverse of 1 by 5 plus tan inverse of 1 by 5. Now, if I use the formula given up, I have written here that's tan inverse of A plus tan inverse of B. This will be nothing but tan inverse of A plus B upon 1 minus A B. The first bracket I am expanding by using the formula tan inverse of A plus tan inverse of B is tan inverse of A plus B upon 1, plus 1 minus AB plus tan inverse of 1 by 7 plus again I am going to use this formula tan inverse of A plus tan inverse of B tan inverse of A plus tan inverse of B is tan inverse of A plus B upon 1 minus AB right this can be written as tan inverse of 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 is 2 by 8 64 minus 1 63 by 64 plus tan inverse of 1 by 7 plus tan inverse of 2 by 5 upon 25 minus 1, 24 by 25, right, LCM guys, I am just um, doing LCM here, now, let's see the cancellation, 8 ones are, 8 eights are, okay, and here this is going to be 2 ones are, 2 twelves are, 5 ones are, 5 fives are, right, now, this is going to be tan inverse, denominator of, denominator of denominator, becomes numerator so this 8 will be multiplied by 2 so this will be 16 by 63 plus tan inverse of 1 by 7 plus denominator of denominator becomes numerator tan inverse of 5 by 12 I need to apply the formula again now this could be written as let's see this if I use the first two terms and apply the formula, tan inverse of A plus tan inverse of B is tan inverse of A plus B upon 1 minus A into B plus tan inverse of 5 by 12, right? Now, this could be further expanded as this is going to be nothing but when you simplify this, this will be tan inverse of once I do the LCM and simplify this, 
this should give me 7 by 17 and inverse of 7 by 17 that 16 by 63 plus 1 by 7 upon 1 minus 16 by 63 into 1 by 7 should give me 7 by 17 plus tan inverse of 5 by 12 use the formula again tan inverse of a plus tan inverse of b so is nothing but tan inverse of a plus b upon 1 minus a into b right simplify this again this will give you tan inverse of 169 upon 169 which is nothing but tan inverse of 1 right now guys we know that tan 45 guys see this tan 45 is 1 that means 45 has to be tan inverse of 1 45 is nothing but 180 divided by 4 so tan inverse of 1 can be written as pi by 4 and I presume that's what I have to prove fine we get this thing here next let's see another some people prove that cos inverse of 63 by 65 plus twice tan inverse of 1 by 5 is equal to sin inverse of 3 by 5 right now I have multiple functions here I have cos tan and sin all of them so I'll have to make an assumption here to do the sum so you'll say let cos inverse of 63 by 65 be equal to x therefore cos x will be equal to 63 by 65 now let tan inverse of 1 by 5 be equal to y therefore tan y will be equal to 1 by 5 right next similarly let sin inverse of 3 by 5 be equal to z therefore sin z will be equal to 3 by 5 let's draw the right angle triangle for all of them people let's assume this angle is 90 this is x cos is adjacent and hypo right so in which case I should get this as I just calculate this and give you in the meantime just let me draw the other triangle this is going to be y this is 90 so tan is opposite upon adjacent so this is 5 is 25 plus 1 26 so this is going to be root 26 and here if I draw this this is going to be z this is sin 3 and 5 so this is going to be 4 right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out a couple of more things uh, this when you solve this this will come to 5 okay now uh, before I start with the sum I'm going to find out a couple of more things uh, why I'm going to find that out I'll show you a little later first let's see how do we find this I'm going to find out the value of cos 2y cos 2y I can use multiple angles and find this out guys cos 2y is nothing but cos square y minus sin square y cos 2y is going to be cos square y minus sin square y multiple angle cos y cos is adjacent upon hypo cos square y minus sin square y right so in that case this is going to be 25 by 26 minus 1 by 26 24 by 26 which is going to be nothing but 12 by 30 I will also find out sin 2y 
So why are you finding this out? Just give me two minutes, I'll explain to you why I'm finding out. First, let me just find out the values. Sin 2y, multiple angles. Sin 2 theta is 2 sin theta cos theta. Sin 2y is going to be 2 sin y cos y, which is going to be equal to 2 sin y sin opposite upon hypo cos adjacent upon hypo so this is going to be 10 upon 26 which is nothing but 5 upon 30 right not a question why did I find this out look at your sum guys I need I have the sum if I express it in terms of variable I need x plus 2y cos inverse of 63 by 65 or I have assumed as x plus 2 tan inverse of 1 by 5 I have assumed as y now what did I tell you look at your left hand side and bring the right hand side function on the right hand side I have sine inverse if I bring the sine inverse of this side this will become sine so what I am going to do is I am going to try to find out sine of x plus 2y do you understand how I get this guys take the variables from the left hand side take the function from the right hand side take the variables from the left hand side take the functions from the right hand side this is x this is y these are my two variables on the left hand side the function on the right hand side was sine inverse when I bring it on the other side it becomes sine so I'll say consider sine of x plus 2y now sine of x plus 2y I can expand this by using addition formula sin a plus b sin a cos b plus cos a sin b sin x sin x is going to be nothing but 5 by 65 into cos 2y cos 2y we have already found out as 12 by 13 cos x cos x is going to be 63 by 65 sin 2y we found out as 5 by 30 right now when I simplify this this is going to come out to 507 upon 60 uh, 507 into 65 by 30 taking 65 by 30 as common denominator when you simplify this this will come to 3 by 5 but 3 by 5 guys if I look at my right hand angle triangle I can say 3 by 5 is nothing but sin z right so what have I just proved I have just proved that I have just proved that sin x plus 2y is sin z. This is what I have just proved. Sin function I can cancel from both the sides. Therefore, I can say that x, what was x? Uh, we had assumed x as cos inverse of 63 by 65 plus twice y. y we have assumed as tan inverse of 1 by 5 is equal to z z is sin inverse of 3 by 5 Boom. that's how you prove this right do we get this in here next let's see another sum guys prove that awesome find tan inverse of cos x I think I'll do this very important sum from this chapter what I'm going to do now these are couple of very 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 important sums okay now we will have to find the value of tan inverse of cos x upon 1 plus sin x now remember if you have fraction inside your bracket whatever trigger function you have outside I have to get the same trigger function inside the bracket now inside the bracket I have cos, I have sin, I have everything except tan I need to get a tan angle observe very very carefully guys tan inverse 
cos x i can use some multiple here cos x can be written as cos square x by 2 minus sin square x by 2 cos theta is cos square theta by 2 minus sin square theta by 2 some multiple you need to know your trigonometry formulas very well right now plus right observe carefully people sin x i can use multiple formula again here sin x can be written as 2 cos x by 2 sin x by 2 सब मल्टीपल फॉर्मूला साइन थीटा इज टू साइन थीटा बाय टू कॉस थीटा बाय टू वन कैन बी रिटर्न प्लीज ऑब्जर्व केयरफुली पीपल वन कैन बी रिटर्न एस कॉस क्वे थीटा प्लस साइन क्वे थीटा वन कैन बी रिटर्न एस कॉस क्वे एक्स बाय टू प्लस साइन क्वे एक्स बाय टू ना दिस कैन बी रिटर्न एस टैन इन My numerator is in the form a square minus b square. A square minus b square is a plus b into a minus b. My denominator is in the form a square plus two ab plus b square. My denominator is in the form a square plus two ab plus b square, which can be written as a plus b the whole square, right? Cos x by two plus sine x by two, and the square gets cancelled. So this will be tan inverse of cos x by two minus sine x by two. Upon cos x by 2 plus sine x by 2. Remember what I told you at the beginning of the sum. Whatever is the trigo function outside, I need to get the same function inside, right? I need tan. Now, if you recall all your trigo formulas, whenever you have to get tan, the easiest way to get tan is that the first number of your denominator should be one. In all tan formulas the first number of the denominator should be 1 now if i want to make this number as 1 i will have to divide this by cos x by 2 guys understand the logic instead of mugging up i have a tan inverse outside i need to get tan inside for all tan functions in fraction the first number in the denominator is 1 if i want to make that number as 1 i will say divide numerator and denominator by cos x by 2 so in that case this will be tan inverse cos x by 2 upon cos x by 2 can be written as 1 right sin x by 2 upon cos x by 2 can be written as tan x by 2 sin upon cos is tan cos x by 2 upon cos x by 2 can be written as 1 Sin x by 2 upon cos x by 2 can be written as tan x by 2. I have divided every term in that fraction by cos x by 2. Now please observe carefully. Tan x by 2 can be written as tan x by 2 into 1. Whether I write tan x by 2 or I write tan x by 2 into 1, it's the same thing. Now. Let's see this. This can be written as tan inverse. One can be written as tan forty-five. Tan forty-five is one. So this can be written as tan pi by four minus tan x by two upon one plus this one. I'm substituting as tan pi by four into tan x by two. Right, people. Now this is in the form tan a minus tan b upon one plus tan a tan b. This is addition formula, right? Tan a minus tan b upon one plus tan a tan b is nothing but tan a minus b. Tan inverse and tan are complementary functions. Tan inverse. In reality, is nothing but one upon tan. 
So tan inverse and tan are complementary functions, so they will cancel each other. So my answer will be pi by 4 minus x by 2. Right? Let's see a couple of more sums of this kind, people. Find the value of tan inverse of a cos x minus b sin x upon b cos x plus a sin x. Right people, let's try to understand this. I have a tan inverse function outside, that means I need to get a tan function inside. For all tan functions which are in fraction, the first number in the denominator should be 1. If I want tan, my first number in the denominator should be 1. To convert this number as 1, I need to divide this by b cos x. If I want to convert this number into 1, I need to divide the fraction by b cos x. So I'll say divide numerator and denominator by b cos x. So in that case, this will become tan inverse a cos x upon b cos x will give you a upon b minus b sin x upon b cos x is going to be nothing but sin x upon cos x which is nothing but tan x b, b cos x upon b cos x b cos x upon b cos x is going to be 1 b cos x upon b cos x is going to give you 1 so this will be 1 plus a sin x upon b cos x will give you a upon b tan x right if I divide the numerator and denominator by b cos x this is what I will get people see this this is in the form tan inverse of a minus b upon 1 plus a b Remember I had just given you a similar formula some time ago in our previous sum tan inverse of A minus tan inverse of B is nothing but tan inverse of A minus B upon 1 plus AB. If I use this formula this will become tan inverse of A upon B minus tan inverse of tan X. If I use this formula, this will become tan inverse of a upon b minus tan inverse of tan x. Tan inverse and tan gets cancelled, so your answer is going to be tan inverse of a upon b minus x. Next, let's see another sum guys. <coughs> Sin inverse of 3x minus 4x cubed. Right? Now, let's see this. What we are going to have to do here, guys, is we are going to have to use a family called as triple angle. I don't think I've given you the formulas of triple angle. What I'm going to do is, first thing, I'll give you all the formulas of triple angle. Please write these formulas down. Triple angle formulas. Triple angle formulas, there are only three formulas here. Triple angle. One, you have sin 3 theta. As the name suggests, triple angle 3 theta. Sin 3 theta is 3 sin theta minus 4 sin cube theta. Next, cos 3 theta. Cos 3 theta is 4 cos cube theta minus 3 cos theta. Next, tan 3 theta. Tan 3 theta is 3 tan theta minus tan cube theta upon 1 minus 3 tan square theta. These are my three triple angle formulas. I don't think I've given you these formulas before. That's the reason I've given you all the formulas now. Now let's see this. Let's try to do this sum. Here they've told you to find the value of sin inverse of 3x minus 4x cube. Right? What you will do is, let's assume, 
let x be equal to sin theta. Let us assume x is sin theta. Why did I make the assumption? Guys, look at this. The function I have outside is inverse, sin inverse. I have a sine function outside. To solve this, I need to have a sine function inside. So I will therefore say this is equal to sine inverse of 3 x I am substituting as sine theta minus 4 sine cube theta. This is sine inverse of 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cube theta. If I use the triple angle, this is nothing but sine 3 theta. Sine inverse and sine gets cancelled, so this will be 3 theta. Now, as x is equal to sine theta, if I take the sine on the other side, I'll get sine inverse of x will be equal to theta. If I take sine on the other side, that will become sine inverse. Therefore, I can say sine inverse of 3x minus 4x cube, we had found out is nothing but 3 theta. And theta can be written as sine inverse of x. So this is nothing but 3 sine inverse of x. That will be your answer. Next, let's see another sum guys. Cos inverse of 3 cos x plus 4 sin x upon 5. Right? Now, this can be written as cos inverse of split the numerator. If I split the numerator, this is 3 upon 5 cos x plus 4 upon 5 sin x. Right? Now, let's see this. Let us assume that 3 upon 5 is say cos theta. If 3 upon 5 is cos theta, then I can say therefore theta is cos inverse of 3 by 5. Moreover, if 3 upon 5 is cos theta, if I draw a right angle triangle, 3 upon 5 is cos theta, that means adjacent side will be 3 and hypo will be 5, therefore opposite will be 4. In which case, therefore, I can say that sine theta will be nothing but 4 upon 5. From this triangle, sine theta will be 4 upon 5. And tan theta is going to be nothing but 4 upon 3. Now, let's continue with our sum. We had cos inverse of 3, 3 upon 5. 3 upon 5 we've assumed as cos theta cos x. Plus 4 upon 5, we just found out the value. 4 upon 5 is nothing but sin theta sin x. I can use addition formula here. Cos inverse cos a cos b plus sin a sin b is nothing but cos a minus b theta minus x. Right? Cos inverse and cos gets cancelled. Theta this is equal to theta minus x. Now people see this. We have said that tan theta is 4 upon 3. If tan theta is 4 upon 3, this implies that theta will be equal to tan inverse of 4 by 3. If tan theta is 4 upon 3, then theta will be equal to tan inverse of 4 by 3. So theta I can substitute as tan inverse of 4 by 3 minus x. That will be my answer. Fine. Let's move on to another sum, guys. Tan inverse of root of 1 minus x. Sorry, 1 plus x plus root of 1 minus x upon root of 1 plus x minus. 1 minus x. Right? Now, let's assume let x be equal to cos 2 theta. 
right? Now before I start with the sum, why did I take cos 2 theta? Because I have some mul I have multiple formula here which says that 1 plus cos 2 theta is nothing but 2 cos square theta and 1 minus cos 2 theta is 2 sin square theta. I have it in the form 1 plus x, 1 minus x. So by using the same trigo function, I can substitute both. So let's start with the sum now. Tan inverse of root of 1 plus x plus root of 1 minus x upon root of 1 plus x minus root of 1 minus x. This can be written as tan inverse of root of 1 plus cos 2 theta plus root of 1 minus cos 2 theta. I am substituting the value of x. Root of 1 plus cos 2 theta minus root of 1 minus cos 2 theta. Right? I have already given you the sub multiple formula I will be using. Sorry, multiple formula that I will be using. 1 plus cos 2 theta is nothing but 2 cos square theta. 1 minus cos 2 theta is nothing but 2 sin square theta. 2 cos square theta. 2 sin square theta. Right? Square and root gets cancelled. So this will be tan inverse of root 2 cos theta minus root 2 sin theta upon root 2 cos theta minus root 2 sin theta. I could take root 2 common in the numerator denominator. So in which case I will get this answer as tan inverse of cos theta minus sin theta upon cos theta sorry cos theta plus sin theta guys. Cos theta plus sin theta minus upon cos theta minus sin theta. Right? Now, I have a tan function outside. I need a tan function inside. How do I get a tan function inside? The first term of the denominator should be 1. How do I make the first term of the denominator 1? By dividing by cos theta. So divide numerator and denominator by cos theta. So if I divide numerator denominator by cos theta, I will get tan inverse of cos theta upon cos theta is 1, sin theta upon cos theta is tan theta, cos theta upon cos theta is 1, sin theta upon cos theta is tan theta. Now guys, see this. The tan theta of the denominator can be written as, tan theta can be written as tan theta into 1. Whether I write tan theta or I write that as tan theta into 1, it's the same thing. Now, 1 can be written as tan 45. That's tan pi by 4 plus tan theta upon, I'm not substituting this. This particular one, I'm going to write this as tan pi by 4 tan theta tan inverse. I could use addition formula here. Tan A plus tan B upon 1 minus tan A tan B is tan A plus B. Right? Tan inverse and tan gets cancelled. So this will be pi by 4 plus theta. Guys, but. But x is equal to cos 2 theta. We had assumed this right in the beginning. If I take the cos function on the other side, I will get cos inverse of x is 2 theta. If I take 2 on the other side, I will get 1 upon 2 cos inverse of x is equal to theta. Substitute the value of theta. So this will be pi by 4 plus theta can be written as 1 upon 2 cos inverse of x. So the answer will be pi by 4 plus 1 upon 2 cos inverse of x. This finishes this chapter. We will stop this here for the day. Thank you very much.